Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. So today I have with me Sakshi. Uh, she has recently moved into Morgan Stanley as a full stack managerial role. So today we'll be learning from her that uh, what, how was her interview experience and a lot more like how, say for example, if someone wants to become a full stack engineer and all, so what are the different things that one should be looking at? What are the different tools and all that one should be aware about? If you're in this session, we'll be talking about like uh, how was her, uh, how, her journey uh, to reach Morgan Stanley. And what one is like, who's a person who is looking to become a full stack engineer, he or she should be looking for to learn what are the different tools and all that one should look at and how to become a successful full stack uh, engineer, right? So let's start uh, the session. So let's start with a quick introduction from Sakshi. So yeah, Sakshi, can you share a brief introduction about your journey, your educational background and so on? Sure, sure. Yeah, so hi everyone. Uh, uh, so apparently I'm working, I have just joined Morgan Stanley as a manager. Uh, so manager is basically a, a development role, like it's SG3 role. Uh, they do have that kind of hierarchy. So I mean, it, it's, it's just manager. Uh, so yeah, I do have uh, 3.6 years of experience. And uh, previously I was associated with uh, organizations such as Persistent System and ITEX. Uh, so yeah, one was service and one was product. Uh, both experiences were different and I got to learn a lot from it. Uh, I have completed my education. I have completed my BTEC from Pune University itself. And then I have done one diploma course from NIT Barangal uh, for AIML. Just out of interest, I want to learn AI and ML. So that's why. So yeah, that's about me. Right. So like you, because you mentioned that you have recently uh, moved into Morgan Stanley. So can you yeah. share briefly about like what was your interview experience and what specifically is a managerial role in Morgan Stanley? Okay, uh, so uh, the interview process starts with recruiter starts uh, reaching to you. Uh, they will ask you for a resume and uh, once your resume is shortlisted, you will have some hacker rank test, which would be uh, uh, for which duration is around 60 minutes, I guess. And it has uh, uh, lit code problem solving questions uh, like uh, easy to medium. There are two questions which are easy to medium. You need to pass all the test cases and there are some Java MCQs. The criteria to pass this test is first you need to complete the problem solving questions and it uh, i mean uh, pass all the test cases of the problem solving questions so yeah uh, after that you will have uh, three o to five discussions which will uh, evolve mostly around problem solving and uh, system design only uh, so uh, starting with java uh, java basic in the first round java basic and high level in the first round uh, with problem solving then you will be having system design problem solving questions till the end so there would be around uh, five to six rounds depend on the uh, role uh, that you are getting uh, at the end, you will be having profit discussion, uh, which will evolve mostly around like which role you will be fitting. Like uh, since I was having 3.8 years of experience, they were confused in between senior consultant and manager role. So this last round will decide like what role you will be fitting. Uh, so yeah, in the last round, they also asked me some uh, machine learning questions. Uh, they were like, since you have done a course, so they, they have asked me. But usually that's not the case. And then it is followed by HR round. Yeah, that's it. Nice, nice. So, and, and like, uh, given that you had work, done that course, so you were able to like answer those questions well on the AIML side or uh, did you struggle? Actually, I have, I have done that course like two years back. I was not able to recall, I'm not able to recall all the concept, but the questions they right, asked. Right. So I just knew the uh, concepts or here, some information related to it. Uh, so it's like you, right, you right. can't just act raw in front of them. You need to say something, right? Uh, and it right, should be right. correct, obviously. So yeah, I was able right, to right. answer some, not in detail, but I was in, uh, able to answer some basic scenarios. I guess, so like now from my personal experience, uh, I mean, when, when you mention about like something that's not related to your profession, like what you have been doing, but something that you have, that's for example, auxiliary that, that, that you have just done out of interest, right? So that isn't something that wherein you are evaluated on, like this is not your primary skills, right? But people usually touch upon these things to make sure that, okay, you know a bit about these things. Yeah. But what matters more here is that like, you have this knack of learning, you want to explore beyond your domain and all, right? This is what actually the interviewers appreciate when, for example, you are a full stack engineer and you still made an attempt to like learn AIML, right? So that's kind of yeah. providing a feather in your cap that, okay, you are trying to like look beyond what you are working on, right? That's the major respect. And that's why like they probably touched upon few things, but they didn't evaluate you on those things. Sorry. So, like, that's my personal opinion based on, like, if I would ever take an interview of someone in this kind of a profession. Right. Okay. So, let's discuss another thing. So, what motivated you to become a full stack engineer and how did you get started in this career path? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, I have started my journey with the persistent systems. Uh, so I started there as a front-end developer, mostly. Uh, I'm, I was working into JavaScript and Angular framework. Uh, so in that case, I was like, like uh, we are sending some backend API requests, but we are not knowing like what's happening in, in the backend, right? So mm -hmm. the thing that motivates me is like, uh, I want to know, I want to explore like what's happening from the start to end in the software. So you will mm -hmm. get end-to-end -end idea. So yeah, that was the thing which motivated me. And so I started learning about backend technologies and backend framework. And uh, when I switched uh, for the first time, uh, when I made the switch for the first time, I started uh, giving an interview in the full stack industry. So yeah, and right. even I landed in the full stack itself. So yeah. Nice, nice. Man. And, and exactly like what tools, technologies and programming languages are like something that you focused on or, or I should say that what are the basically essential to know things in this domain for someone who is aspiring to become a full stack engineer and for you like how was your experience how did you learn them okay uh, so tools and technology mostly into, involved uh, front-end technologies front-end language I can say such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript uh, back-end languages such as Java or Python and uh, you can learn some framework which are which are which plays mostly crucial role like for front-end you can uh, learn any framework such as Angular or React or uh, and for backend, uh, if, if we are using Java, then Spring, and if we are using Python, then Django. Uh, also, I can say like uh, you need to have knowledge of database, uh, maybe MySQL or uh, MongoDB. Uh, then you you should have knowledge of uh, versioning tools such as Git. Uh, then there are also popularly uh, like we are using build tool, Maven or Gradle. So yeah, these were some tools and technology that you need to uh, have. Uh, you need to learn before before you are uh, thinking of becoming a full stack that you followed like would you want to mention or maybe like we can share the details of those resources in the description description section for people yeah. to refer yeah yeah so mostly youtube and uh, some google mm -hmm. and i was also at like apart from that like if right right so apart from these things if someone wants to become a full stack engineer so these these are mainly on the technology sites but one also needs to understand the, some of the devops perspectives so for example jenkins and all i'm not sure what what you guys are using but a bit of those mm -hmm. things ci cd pipelines and all the testing frameworks and all yeah. i think that yeah. those things also come in handy yeah, yeah that is great. so you need to run the right, deployment right. part maybe or some docker or kubernetes or maybe jenkins Right, right, right. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the next question. So can you describe your typical day as a full stack engineer at Morgan Stanley? And like, what are the common tasks that you work on on like your day to day basis? Okay, uh, so as I mentioned, like I have just joined Morgan Stanley. Uh, but uh, so but I can mention a day like as a full stack engineer since I was working as a full stack developer in my previous organization as well. So uh, a typical day uh, starts with like, uh, I mean, it mostly evolves around designing, uh, designing, uh, developing APIs, backend APIs, uh, designing some user interfaces for front end, obviously. Uh, then design, uh, designing some database structures, like how how our database should be structured, how the mapping would be. Uh, some it might involve some research task as well. Like we want to do research, like we want to integrate all the technologies from front end to back end, right? So we need to make sure like they are compatible with each other and they work smoothly. So yeah, and uh, mostly it will involve around like. Uh, uh, discussing with colleagues about like how we can do it in a better way. Uh, so yeah, that's that's about uh, the day. Cool, cool, cool. I guess because you have recently started, so probably there is a lot more that you will explore in coming days, and probably maybe after a yeah, month yeah. or so, we can like do another session where yeah, we yeah. can discuss like what typically people at Morgan Stanley are doing. Right. This is basically yeah, a yeah. very early stage for this question, but yeah, I mean, thanks for ans answering this right now. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so let's let's move on to the next question, which is more like general for full stack engineers, right? So, which is like, what are the some of the common technical challenges that one faces as a full stack engineer? And how do you specifically come over them? Okay, uh, some common challenges involved, like, uh, as, as I mentioned, like, uh, it's a full stack and there are uh, many technologies from front end to back end. Uh, so, you need to explore all the technologies because you want, you need to integrate all the technologies in a one go. And uh, you need to ensure like they work smoothly. Second thing is, I just feel like a scaling part. Uh, we need to ensure like our, our application is scaled properly. Uh, so scaling part, I, I think uh, we need to take care of. Uh, I mean, that's the challenge. Uh, uh, third part, I think uh, it's a security. Uh, like uh, we need to ensure like uh, we have, we know some encryption techniques so that uh, uh, to make sure our uh, application is secure. And yeah, uh, these are some of the challenges. 
so to overcome these challenges maybe uh, we, whatever we are doing or whatever coding uh, we are practice whatever practice uh, whatever practice we are following uh, we need to do re do some research before before applying that technique uh, so we can discuss with our manager or our colleague uh, to ensure that it works so smoothly so yeah mm -hmm. right 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 and anywhere like where in you feel like i mean like see for the back end if you look at the back end it's all about like like looking at that back end code and investigating right but when it goes down to the full stack right it's it's kind of there are certain number of bridges which are provided between the front end and the back end right that and there correct. can be some like now when you're like working on a system which is like end to end right mm -hmm. does it become very difficult to debug like whether the whether the issues in the uh, in the front end side or somewhere like between these bridges which essentially are apis or something in the back end side right do you ever feel this kind of a problem now how to isolate where to see <laughs> like whenever the issue or some work uh, comes first we look into front end like is it working well into front end uh, if it is mm -hmm. not working into front end we can just check the api calls if there are some issues in the api calls then it is obviously back end so it is easily it is kind of easy to identify which it is front end or back end it's not that difficult it's just that you need to have knowledge of these both frameworks both so in general any good tools that you can mention about like how to debug issues in this whole framework uh not uh, not any specific tools but um, maybe i can talk about some debugging techniques that you can use uh, because i mean yeah, if, yeah. if it comes to front end we, we are directly using i mean uh, i mean we are directly using chrome and so to debug uh, maybe you should have a good debugging knowledge you can just go through i mean it, it's a very uh, there are very basic techniques to debug there are just 10 to 12 points that are mentioned and we can we can just easily debug so we can add some sys out statements and print statements uh, in the front end and back end mm. for back end i guess uh, i mean the uh, j unit framework like testing it properly writing test cases uh, right. we have to uh, debug it properly so right. yeah right. I think log statements are, are usually like one of the best yeah. techniques to debug yeah, something. So for example, you can put in yes, some logs on the front end, right? Yeah. You can put in some Correct. logs in the back end side and see like where in the things are broken. I also yes. think that one one more good tool is uh, the inspect window in in the inspect in the basically window. browsers. Yes. That's also like a very good touch point if you are mm -hmm. right, right, right. So that's also a really good touch point if you are looking for something. And on the API side, inspect. like um, I usually used right, right, right. So on nice. the API side, I think there are a lot of good tools that you can use for debugging. Like there are a lot of yeah. Postman and all kind of tools that yeah. you can use to invoke the APIs yeah. and see like what kind of responses and all you are getting. Right, right. Postman, you can use mostly if you are just back-end yeah. engineer and so, you want to uh, test back-end APIs. You... Right, 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 right. Postman, I think, is one of the best tools when it comes yeah, to like yeah, debugging your APIs. Yeah, correct. Right, right. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next. So, uh, can you describe any good project or that that, that you would say is your like f I mean your best project in your career that uh, you have worked on as a full stack engineer and what role did you play or how like how that role kind of carved your career right? So, what was mm -hmm. essential in that role which, which kind of set you apart in where you have where you have reached now in your career? Okay, uh, so I mean uh, it's not like there is one project uh, which. Uh, because of which I have learned this much things or have the, because of which uh, I am here. So, I mean, you get to learn from many projects in the in your career, like right from the school, college projects that you have been doing. But I would like to mention about one of my tasks that uh, I have done in my previous company as a full stack developer. So, uh, that task was, I mean, uh, it was not uh, one of my best tasks, but I can say it was one of my most challenging tasks uh, I have done till date. Uh, so, it was basically... Uh, uh, like integrating Instagram uh, into our web app, uh, wherein if you are just uh, adding some comments or doing DM from Instagram, oh, nice. it will be reflected into the web app. And uh, if you are doing, uh, if you are replying from your web app, it will be reflected into the Instagram. So uh, for that, uh, I need to design all complete front end and back end. Uh, so my task involved like right from the uh, gathering the like basic requirements. I need to gather basic requirements and then I need to design the database. I need to investigate like what more I can do in that. So that uh, customer in customer get the uh, get the best best use of it. Uh, so yeah, and then designing backend. I started with backend and frontend. Uh, challenges was it was my first time I am working with a Spring framework because I have never worked with Spring framework before. So challenge was learning the new framework, developing it uh, sideways, and uh, uh, and then the first thing was uh, like it was whole and soul my responsibility to develop. Uh, manager or lead will uh, lead was there to guide me. 
but uh, it was my responsibility to develop it uh, whole and soul so it, it was kind of challenging and uh, i actually learned a lot and enjoyed a lot because i get to know and learn many things out of it so yeah Okay, so like I mean, yeah, Spring is Spring is like one of the most common framework when it comes to Java development in the in the yeah, industry right yeah. now. So, yeah. A lot of good things, like a lot of challenges come with an opportunity to like learn a lot okay. of good things. So that's that's true. Okay. So yeah. So uh, move on to the last question. So uh, you mentioned that you did a course on uh, did a course on AI ML, right? But in general, how do you stay up to date with the latest trend in technologies in in your domain, like in full stack engineering? And what resources would you recommend someone to look at if he is or he or she is trying to learn more about the full stack development? Okay, uh, to stay up to date, maybe uh, you can some uh, you can follow some blogs. Uh, you can just go through the uh, articles or uh, go through the. I mean, LinkedIn is the best resource, I guess. I mean, there are many channels you can follow therein. Uh, you can attend some conferences or some uh, some uh, uh, some tutorials, I can say, or some conferences. Or you can just go through the research paper of the technologies that you are working. In. Like, let's say Java, it's 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 so like a trending technology, and every day it is evolving. So you can go through some research papers as well uh, for Spring, maybe for Java or any technology that you are working. And it is necessary because you you will get a better idea of technology. You will the uh, you will get most use of you it. You can do most of use of it. So it is very much necessary. I think so. Yeah. Right. Right. So uh, thank you, Sakshi. So these were mostly the questions that we had. We'll provide uh, your LinkedIn profile in the description, and maybe if someone has more questions for you for the full stack development, they can directly approach you on LinkedIn, or people yeah. can drop in their questions in the comment section, and we'll be happy to address them along with you. So thank you for yeah. spending your time, and uh, hope you will have a great career ahead. All the best, Sakshi. Yeah. Thank you, Ankit. Also, thank you for inviting me for this session. Yeah. Uh, thanks. I, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. -bye.